Okay, so here we're going to see another recycler view, kind of a different view of the same information to try to get you comfortable with recycler views. And the two things that distinguish this recycler view diff, as I call it, um, from the recycler view is the dynamics are a little different and the implementation technology. Uh, some of the classes I use are a little different such that I don't have to call notified data set changed. So it's got, it's kind of a neat thing and, uh, you know, we're going to use it oh, uh, later on in the class as well. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the dynamics. So we have this scrollable list. Uh, we still have the same thing where we, we click on it, we get the index, we get the name. That's, that's not changed. We still have this, um, refresh, which, um, now maybe, maybe it's sort of doing something. What's it doing? So we still have the, um, garbage can. And now when we refresh, yeah, what's happening is we're adding one at a time. Um, and you know, they've got the, the right, uh, index and, uh, um, there's no way to get back to the list beside, uh, restarting. But if you do pay attention here, we go down to the end, the last uh, released albums without a net, 21. And if we go up and we pull, oh my gosh, after without a net, which is 21, we actually have working man instead, which is 22. This is just a random, uh, it chooses a random value. And uh, we kill everything. And as we pull, we get one. Okay, so those, those are the dynamics. Now let's take a look uh, at the code. And uh, the first thing you'll notice, actually the main activity is slightly different. Uh, it's got this sort of more complicated layout. It's actually got a main activity and a content main sort of all smushed together and you know, whatever. I, I, I sort of show you this because there are things to pay attention to and things not to pay attention to. And the sort of app bar layout and the toolbar, we're not, we're not going to spend that much uh, effort figuring that stuff out. It's nice to know that there is a toolbar. It's nice to know how to get hold of it. Uh, but the, the thing that we really care about for this activity is our swipe container, which is the swipe refresh layout and our recycler view. Right? And we saw that before and the row is going to be the same. It's got the row pick and the row text. We're good. Uh, our repository looks very similar. We have this data class, which is a string and a Boolean. We have this list in memory. Now we got something a little bit, uh, a little bit fancier. We've got a, a random object with a fixed seed. So it always gives us, you know, random, uh, results in the same order. So we can test. Now we can fetch data, which gives us the entire list, or we can also fe fetch a random item. Okay. So uh, you can imagine that's what we're going to use. We go into main activity here and think things are a little different. Uh, we have an adapter. We don't have a list model. I wonder where our list is. So the list sort of lives in a different place. We're going to get to that. We do have a repository object and let's go to on create. Uh, this, this stuff looks, you know, all the same, right? This is, we're getting, this is, we're getting familiar repetition, repetition. Activity main binding. Where does that come from? This is called activity main. It's not, there is no content main here. So it's just activity main binding. We inflate it. Global layout and inflator. Set content view to the root object of this uh, view binding object. Uh, here we're knitting the toolbar. Maybe you haven't seen that before. Um, there's some uh, API calls here. Although we did set the toolbar title in the previous uh, example here, we're setting it slightly differently and uh, setting the, the text color to black. If you remember the text color was white before I sort of throwing these things in to give you a sense of what's possible. Uh, don't let this stuff sort of throw you off. If, it, if you find it confusing, I'm just setting up the title and doing it in a fun way. Okay. Just like before we got our, our, bind, our view binding object, we grab our recycler view out of it. We have to set the adapter. Where does the adapter come from? Now it's called this RV recycler view diff adapter. We're going to look at that. So it's slightly different from the adapter we did last time. Uh, but let, let's not get uh, involved in that quite yet. 
And we've got this linear layout manager, uh, very simple, doing the same thing with the divider item decorations. Um, all that's good. Here, I'm, I'm actually using this linear layout manager dot vertical. In the last one, I, I asked the actual uh, layout manager what its orientation was. Yeah, maybe that's a better way of doing it. Okay, I've got this replace list function. And here I'm fetching data from the repository. And fetching data from the repository means return this entire list. So that's what I'm doing. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm uh, replacing the list, which presumably is, is empty, although we don't really know where the list is yet because we don't have a list model with the entire repository. And uh, for the set on refresh listener, when I pull the, that list down, here I am uh, just fetching a single random entry from the repository, and I'm creating a new list. This is kind of interesting and new. It's a mutable list of data, okay? And to initialize this mutable list, we are going to add all, I'm not sure what's going on here, adapter.currentList, hmm. And then we're gonna add the new item. So this is a mutable list, a mutable list. You can add all, you can add. Add all adds every element of this current list. So instead of having a list model, it seems like the current list is contained in the adapter. Okay. That, that, that's new. And then uh, we're also adding this new data element, and then we're calling replace list here, just like we called replace list here. So let's take a look at replace list. If you remember before, replace list is what interacted with our list model. Um, here, we're calling this submit list to the adapter, on the adapter. So <clears throat> basically, the list is contained in the adapter. And this is new. We haven't seen this before. And when we do clear, we're creating an empty list and we're replacing that. So what's going on with this RV diff adapter? Sort of what's different here? This is the first thing that's different. In the previous example, our adapter uh, inherited from, I think it was recyclerview.adapter. Here, it is, um, uh, being derived from list adapter. Okay, list adapter is a different kind of adapter that knows about lists. Now the cool trick, the cool thing about list adapter is it knows about the current list. And when you want to change something, you call submit list on list adapter, and it automatically computes the differences. How does it automatically compute the differences? You have to provide this class diff, and you have to provide some uh, technical support. This means you no longer have to call notify dataset changed. That's very cool. What do you, you gain something? What do you give up? You have to have the old list and the new list both existing at the same time when you call submit list place list and it calls adapter dot submit list submit list is a function on the list adapter this list adapter it is not a function you have to write so submit list says give me compute the difference between the current list and this list and update the view okay no need for data set notify data set changed very cool but I do need two lists now those two lists can point to the same items. I mean, they can, if they, they can point to all the same items and then nothing's gonna change, but they, they can have some of the same items uh, in common. They can have pointers to the same items. That's okay, but I need to have two independent lists when I call submit list. Okay, so what's, what else is going on in an RV diff, diff adapter? So because I'm inheriting from list adapter, that means two things. One, it means there is a list in here, which I can access adapter dot current list. That's how I got that adapter dot. Um, there's submit list is, you know, the, the most important, you know, there's a view holder in here, there's current list, you know, item count, there's, there's a bunch of things going on. 
in in uh, list adapter because it knows about the list. So one thing that's going on in list adapter is get item. So if I want to get a hold of an item before I needed the list model, now it's coming from my parent, which is defining a function called get item. get item, I pass it the position, that's how I can uh, get this functionality. You selected one, Grateful Dead from the Mars Hotel. Okay, that comes from this. This get item is defined on the list adapter. We don't have to write it. This get position, it's the exact same thing as we saw before. It's basically calling binding adapter position, given a view holder. This onClick listener, it's being set in the view holder, the inner class. It's being set in the init block. We all saw, saw all this before. It's calling get position with uh, this, which is the view holder, to find out what position it is, and then it's printing this snack bar. We saw all this before. On create view holder, this is the inflation. This is ex exactly the same. Got this row binding object. Boom, boom. Yeah, here's here, here we set the row binding object and make it an instance variable. And then on bind uh, view holder, we, we saw all this before. Here, here's one slight difference. Again, instead of using the list model, we call get item. Get item is a function on the list adapter. List adapter knows about the list. Does it give you direct access to the list data? No. How does the list adapter know what the list is? It knows it because we submit the list to the list adapter and it maintains a reference to that list. Okay, everything else, uh, this, is all, this is all the same. Now we do have to um, give the list adapter some technical support to figure out how to compute the minimum diff between the old and new lists. And you have to define these two functions, are items the same and are the contents the same? And um, you can look up sort of what these mean in detail, but are items the same using the hash code? We haven't really talked about what the hash code is, but it's basically a summary of what your item is, is a good way to figure out whether your items are the same. If you have stable IDs, that's another way of, of, of using these things. Uh, stable IDs, you know, if you're um, asking Reddit for its list of posts, they probably have unique IDs that they're providing for you. So we would use those here. And then our, con you know, so if this is sort of a quick check and then our contents the same, oh, this says um, for the purposes of display, right? So the there might be some item in here that has nothing to do with display, like how many times, uh, 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 you know, a, a pointer to some other object. Now, it's not displayed, it's just got a pointer in there. In that case, we don't uh, compare, that, that's not contents as far as the list adapter is concerned because the list adapter just cares about, do I need to change the current view on screen? And I judge that based on whether any of these data items have changed in a way that would change their display. And in this case, that's everything. That's whether the name is equal to the old name and the ratings are equal. So with just this, the list adapter takes over notified data set changed, automatically computes the minimum difference between the new and old lists. And now I've got a recycler view that looks a lot like the old one, but I interact with it slightly differently. Now, up to this point, you know, you're still trying to figure out what a recycler view even is. You might not immediately think, oh, I want a list adapter. I don't want a list adapter. Some people I think naturally are drawn to this idea of not having to call data set, a notified data set change. Some people find it confusing because there's stuff that's going on under the hood. You have to read the documentation for list adapter and get some sense of how to give it a list and uh, how, to, how to update it. But these are two different um, ways of using recycler views, we will use both of them. And the point here really is to understand the underlying patterns 
of how to construct a recycler view, how to initialize it, how to set the adapter, how to set its layout manager, how in the adapter to actually do binding, when to inflate. These are the important questions and uh, hopefully some answers. All right, see you next time.